Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama on Fox and Friends this morning talking about the way forward after that stunner in New Hampshire. So where do they go from here? Some analytical observations now from Fred Barnes, executive editor of the Weekly Standard, Mort Kondracki, executive editor of Roll Call, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer, Fox News contributors all. And we are going to start this with Charles because he hasn't commented yet on the elections, the primaries in uh, New Hampshire. Essentially, you're clean. <laughs> well, if you're not on the field, you can't get sacked. <laughs> so my jersey is clean, but I'm back and I'm ready to get dirty and intercepted often. So what about this Hillary win? Look, it, it was remarkable, and I think it was, as you indicated before, it had a lot to do with the crying moment. I mean, after all, it showed a lot of people that the android has feelings. And, but I think there was an earlier incident that was somewhat overlooked, and that happened in the debates on Saturday night, which was a moment where Obama let down his guard, and it was not pretty. It was when Hillary was asked a question about likability, and she answered in a rather charming way, saying her feelings had been hurt, and then the praising Obama that he was likable and saying, but I'm not so bad. And Obama answered in an aside that I think he regrets, Without half a smile and, and looking down, he said, uh, you're likable enough, Hillary, which was a nasty a crack that was uncharacteristic of a guy who's run a campaign flawlessly gracious and uplifting. Now, I don't know how many people it affected. The mainstream media did not want to interfere with their story of the, the canonization of uh, Obama, so it wasn't the play, but nine million Americans saw it. And they saw her gracious answer. I think that, that and the incident in the coffee shop. Remember, this is a Democratic election in which there are no issues at all between the three candidates. It's an absurd debate between uh, sort of hopeful change, experienced change, and angry change, which is John Edwards, uh, which has no substance. It's all about personality and about these. Well these odd little events. Mark, let me ask you about Barack Obama and what this means for his campaign. I mean, this obviously slows, if not stops, the momentum he was getting out of Iowa, but what does it mean well, from here on forward? Look, he's, he just got the, the endorsement of the culinary workers in, in Nevada, and, uh, and he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's got uh, half of the, the electorate in South Carolina as African American, so he's, you know, he, his prospects are pretty good. I, I, I don't think there is a front runner at the moment, but um, you know, it's going to be a tussle. Now, there's one point some analysts have been saying that Obama lost because of the Bradley effect, that basically it was racism in, in, uh, in New Hampshire, that, uh, you know, the Tom Bradley ran, uh, mayor of Los Angeles ran for governor of California. People said that they would vote for him, and they ended up not voting for him. And, and people are saying that because the polls indicated that uh, Obama was going to win, then he didn't, that this was the Bradley effect, and it was all about racism. That is poppycock. The exit polls, uh, if you're going to lie to a pollster, you're going to lie to an exit pollster, right? The, the, the final run of exit polls was absolutely dead on uh, predicting uh, how it came out. And, and f furthermore, what do, you, what do you say about Iowa? Iowa was a place just as white as New Hampshire, and Obama won there. I think Obama, what Obama represents is, is, is hope and change, but the, the public you know, was not ready to anoint this guy. I mean, this is somebody we don't really know. The country doesn't really know him. Uh, he talks a wonderful game, but, you know, as he said himself, you've got to be tested, and this is part of the testing process. I don't know that that was conscious in people's minds, but that's the effect, and I think it's a good effect. The next stop for Democrats, Nevada, then South Carolina. Let's mm -hmm. take a real quick uh, look at the real clear politics average of polls in South Carolina. Obama, 44%. Clinton at 31%. Of course, you know, a little scary to look at polls, but South Carolina is a place where about 50% of the mm -hmm. population is African American. Mm -hmm. Fred, looking forward in this Democratic race, mm -hmm. do some forecasts. Well, that's a long ways forward because, uh, you know, the Republican uh, primary is on the 19th of January in South Carolina. The Democrats are on the 26th. But to answer your question, uh, and then, anyway, my point was that's a long, in this race, that is a long ways away. Uh, uh, from now, it'll be 17 days or something like that. The truth is, I, I'm convinced that even some uh, uh, African American leaders in South Carolina are behind Hillary Clinton. That the African American vote is going to go to Barack Obama. I, I don't see how it can't. And you know, for this reason, he is the first African American who has a real chance of winning the Democratic nomination. Jesse Jackson didn't. Uh, Al Sharpton wasn't going to be the nominee, but he could be. Barack Obama could be, and he could be elected president. 
Now, are African-American voters going to go for Hillary Clinton in that situation? I don't think so. So I, I agree with Mort. I think he's in pretty good shape in South Carolina. He's gotten a couple of endorsements in Nevada, which will help him in, uh, in between. And so I, I think he's uh, still uh, has a very solid chance. I, I think he has a slightly better chance than Hillary Clinton, but only slightly. And last night sitting on that desk?